In mathematics, the infimum of a subset S of a partially ordered set T is the greatest element in T that is less than or equal to all elements of S, if such an element exists. Consequently, the term greatest lower bound is also commonly used. The supremum of a subset S of a partially ordered set T is the least element in T that is greater than or equal to all elements of S, if such an element exists. Consequently, the supremum is also referred to as the least upper bound. The infimum is in a precise sense dual to the concept of a supremum. Infima and suprema of real numbers are common special cases that are important in analysis, and especially in Lebesgue integration. However, the general definitions remain valid in the more abstract setting of order theory where arbitrary partially ordered sets are considered. If the supremum of a subset S exists, it is unique. If S contains a greatest element, then that element is the supremum, otherwise, the supremum does not belong to S. Likewise, if the infimum exists, it is unique. If S contains a least element, then that element is the infimum, otherwise, the infimum does not belong to S. The concepts of supremum and infimum are similar to minimum and maximum but are more useful in analysis because they better characterize special sets which may have no minimum or maximum. For instance, the positive real numbers plus asterisk does not have a minimum, because any given element of plus asterisk could simply be divided in half resulting in a smaller number that is still in plus asterisk. There is, however, exactly one infimum of the positive real numbers. 0, which is smaller than all the positive real numbers and greater than any other number which could be used as a lower bound. Note that 0 plus asterisk. Formal definition. A lower bound of a subset S of a partially ordered set is an element of P such that a X for all X in S. A lower bounder of S is called an infimum of S if for all lower bounds Y of S in P, Y A. Similarly, an upper bound of a subset S of a partially ordered set is an element B of P such that B X for all X in S. An upper bound B of S is called a supremum of S if for all upper bounds Z of S in P, Z B. Existence and uniqueness. Infima and suprema do not necessarily exist. However, if an infimum or supremum does exist, it is unique. Consequently, partially ordered sets for which certain infima are known to exist become especially interesting. For instance, a lattice is a partially ordered set in which all finite subsets have both a supremum and an infimum. And a complete lattice is a partially ordered set in which all subsets have both a supremum and an infimum. More information on the various classes of partially ordered sets that arise from such considerations are found in the article on completeness. Properties. Relation to maximal and minimal elements. The infimum of a subset S of a partially ordered set P, assuming it exists, does not necessarily belong to S. If it does, it is a minimal or least element of S. Similarly, if the supremum of S belongs to S, it is a maximal or greatest element of S. For example, consider the set of negative real numbers. This set has no greatest element, since for every element of the set, there is another, larger, element. For instance, for any negative real number x, there is another negative real number x, too, which is greater. On the other hand, every real number greater than or equal to zero is certainly an upper bound on this set. Hence, zero is the least upper bound of the negative rails, so the supremum is zero. This set has a supremum but no greatest element. However, the definition of maximal and minimal elements is more general. In particular, a set can have many maximal and minimal elements, whereas infima and suprema are unique. Minimal upper bounds Finally, a partially ordered set may have many minimal upper bounds without having a least upper bound. Minimal upper bounds are those upper bounds for which there is no strictly smaller element that also is an upper bound. This does not say that each minimal upper bound is smaller than all other upper bounds, it merely is not greater. 
the distinction between minimal and least is only possible when the given order is not a total one. In a totally ordered set, like the real numbers, the concepts are the same. As an example, let S be the set of all finite subsets of natural numbers and consider the partially ordered set obtained by taking all sets from S together with the set of integers Z and the set of positive real numbers plus ordered by subset inclusion as above. Then clearly both Z and plus are greater than all finite sets of natural numbers. Yet, neither is plus smaller than Z nor is the converse true. Both sets are minimal upper bounds but none is a supremum. Least upper bound property The least upper bound property is an example of the aforementioned completeness properties which is typical for the set of real numbers. This property is sometimes called Dedekind completeness. If an ordered set S has the property that every non-empty subset of S having an upper bound also has a least upper bound, then S is said to have the least upper bound property. As noted above, the set of all real numbers has the least upper bound property. Similarly, the set Z of integers has the least upper bound property. If S is a non-empty subset of Z and there is some number n such that every element S of S is less than or equal to n, then there is a least upper bound u for s, an integer that is an upper bound for s and is less than or equal to every other upper bound for s. A well-ordered set also has the least upper bound property, and the empty subset has also a least upper bound, the minimum of the whole set. An example of a set that lacks the least upper bound property is the set of rational numbers. Let S be the set of all rational numbers Q such that Q2 less than 2. Then S has an upper bound but no least upper bound in. If we suppose P is the least upper bound, a contradiction is immediately deduced because between any two rails X and Y there exists some rational P, which itself would have to be the least upper bound or a member of S greater than P. Another example is the hyperreals. There is no least upper bound of the set of positive infinitesimals. There is a corresponding greatest lower bound property, an ordered set possesses the greatest lower bound property if and only if it also possesses the least upper bound property. The least upper bound of the set of lower bounds of a set is the greatest lower bound, and the greatest lower bound of the set of upper bounds of a set is the least upper bound of the set. If in a partially ordered set P every bounded subset has a supremum, this applies also for any set X. In the function space containing all functions from X to P, where FG if and only if FG for all X in X, for example, it applies for real functions, and, since these can be considered special cases of functions, for real n tuples and sequences of real numbers. The least upper bound property is an indicator of the suprema, infima of real numbers. In analysis, infima and suprema of subsets S of the real numbers are particularly important. For instance, the negative real numbers do not have a greatest element, and their supremum is zero. The completeness of the real numbers implies that any bounded non-empty subset S of the real numbers has an infimum and a supremum. If S is not bounded below, one off informally writes INF equals minus infinity. If S is empty, one writes INF equals infinity. Duality. If one denotes by pop the partially ordered set P with the turned around order relation, E, X, Y in pop if and only if X, Y in P, then infimum of a subset S in P equals the supremum of S in pop and vice versa. For subsets of the real numbers, another kind of duality holds, where examples Infima simple the infimum or greatest lower bound of the set of numbers 2, 3, 4 is 2. The number 1 would be a lower bound but not the greatest lower bound and hence not the infimum. Advanced if a set has a smallest element, as in the first example, then the smallest element is the infimum for the set. As the last three examples show, the infimum of a set does not have to belong to the set. 
suprema simple the supremum or least upper bound of the set of numbers 1, 2, 3 is 3. Although 4 is also an upper bound, it is not the least upper bound and hence is not the supremum. Mathematically, this is advanced in the last example. The supremum of a set of rationals is irrational, which means that the rationals are incomplete. One basic property of the supremum is for any functionals f and g. The supremum of a subset S of where denotes divides is the lowest common multiple of the elements of S. The supremum of a subset S of where P is the power set of some set is the supremum with respect to a subset S of P is the union of the elements of S.